Hey guys, um, so a few people, quite a few people have been asking me about window managers. You've been asking me what I use. Uh, some people have been asking me about rising. Rising is, you know, I, th I think it was a term that was used for um, uh, sweeping up cars and then it became more, it's a term more related to uh, making desktops look visually appealing now. Um, so people have been asking me about that, um, you know, my preferences and what I do. And so I, I don't use i3 anymore. I, I started out using i3. Um, it's really easy to get up and running and configure, but it's it's a little limited. Um, I moved on to Awesome Window Manager, which I still think is awesome. Uh, it's written in Lua and it's it's a lot more advanced. Um, it has a very well documented API. Um, and it's you know it's compile it's it's got a its code is compiled at runtime so you you edit this uh, you edit the Lua code and then you run it and it, it reads that code and at runtime um, and there's a lot you can do with it but it's it's very advanced for for some people so they don't like using it um, I I stopped using Awesome because the code is um, and I'll get onto this in a second but. The, the awesome code, it's not modulated, like you just get one big rc.lua file, so you get a huge um, file that you've kind of got to, you've got to clean up, and um, I didn't like that. Um, Kai Hendry got me onto DWM, which is what I'm using now, uh, and DWM comes out of the uh, the whole suckless philosophy, so I'm kind of, oh, cool. it's like, it's very different from... Um, just zoom in on that. So you might have heard of this suckless.org. Um, these guys have made a couple of really cool tools like DWM and uh, ST Terminal um, and Surf Browser, which is this browser here. Um, the whole point of this philosophy is to keep code minimal, to keep it clean, to keep it short. So um, DWM, I think it prides itself on having like a thousand lines of code or less. So it's very small. It's it's very very lean and small and virtually non-existent on system resources. Um, so I moved over from Awesome to DWM when when I was watching a couple of Kai Hendry's videos. Um, just because, by contrast, it was way more appealing to me. And I'm, you know, I'm a minimalist at heart, I said this before. So um, even though I'm not a professional C programmer, I just love the idea. I love the idea behind it, the concept. Um, so a couple of things that I'll just point out, just some tips like, uh, and I might do like a more, uh, maybe a series of tutorials on how I set mine up, but <clears throat> for this video, I'll just give you a couple of pointers. Like I, I, I have stopped using this, um, the main download link, the release version here, because it's from 2015 and there have been some changes made since then on the, on the Git version. Um, so, so when I download it and I'll, I'll do that now actually, just so I can show you a couple of things. The um, <coughs> yeah, there've been some changes made, and it it actually is important. Like it, it affects some of the patches that I use, some of the customizations that I've made, um, which I had trouble with on this version, but on the Git version I didn't have trouble with. Uh, so I'm just using the more recent one now. Um, let's wait for this. For some reason, this uh, the suckless.org website goes down quite a lot, though. I'm kind of surprised that they don't have a better web server. But yeah, um, so if I go into the DWM fault, oh. <clears throat> um, so yeah, the i3 config is just a basic text file of options of config options, and then it it just reads that at runtime. Um, DWM, and you've probably heard this before. You have to compile it each time you make a change, and that sounds tedious, but it's not really. Um, <clears throat> what it is, so you basically, a basic vanilla DWM, um, you just edit the, the header file, the config header file, and say you want to like, I don't know, you want to change a font, you just edit this, um, once you've made your edits that you want to make, you, uh, you come in here and you run make, and that's it, and you just compile it, and you'll end up with a binary, so if I just, uh, You know, you'll see there. Like that's my binary there. You, if you compile it, that's what you get. Now, if this is a note for BSD users, if um, if you if you try and make this, 
and you'll end up with an error because you have to um, you have to edit this file here first, the config.mk file, and you have to change you have to change these things here to local x1 r x11 r6. You've got to correct the paths or it won't work. Um, and I'll just show you this because this is interesting. Like, <clears throat> like if I if I go into my OpenBSD, okay, so I'm in my OpenBSD one now. If I if I go into, let's say I edit, I'm oh, not that one. Uh, Config.make. Yeah, so OpenBSD is actually actually has an X11R6 folder. So it, it I, I think with vanilla DWM you can just leave it as is on OpenBSD, but on FreeBSD you have to change it to local, um, or it won't compile. You'll end up with errors. So if I just I'll get out of this, yeah. um, <clears throat> so I'll just quickly do this now. Local. I think there's one more here. Yeah, USR local and now if I make there you go so and that's it and then you just whack that DWM binary into your uh, extended RC and it will uh, it will run the vanilla DWM is very very minimal very very basic um, if you want to do fancy stuff like you know you see up here I've got colors um, like if I hold up uh, I use um, NCMP CPP for my language learning stuff. How would you say? So if I if I start playing that, you can see the the multicolored stuff that I've got going on there. Um, <coughs> um, the icons and and uh, I've got a bunch of different layouts as well. Like I've got three column layout. I'll um, in fact maybe I can just yeah, yeah. But if I if I do this can see like that's that's an added layout that I did with a patch that's not part of this the basic vanilla DWM I've also got um, also added the Fibonacci one um, and I don't know, there's a couple of others that I put in there like these are layouts um, so yeah and so in order to in order to do those additions and there's transparency on the top bar there that you can kind of add um, you can make it as transparent as you want. Um, and these are the patches that you use for that. So like, <coughs> for example, the alpha patch. Oh, shoot. And what you wanna do is, because because you've used the Git version, if you use the 6.1, you wanna obviously take the 6.1. If you take the Git version, you want this one here. Um, you just got to be be aware that the, ver the diffs need to line up with the version that you've got. Um, if not, then you'll, then you'll have to basically go through and and check the code, make sure that it's um, you know, make sure that it's okay. And all a diff file is, if you're not familiar, a diff file is just basically a, a text file with a bunch of pluses and minuses. So the pluses mean that they're um, and it'll tell you here which file. So in this file, it'll tell you on this line. So on line twelve, um, it's going to add these two lines. Okay, so it gives you kind of the context. And it'll show you where it's being added. Now, if you get a pat, if you get a couple of patches, <coughs> well, if you get one patch, you can just do. Um, oh, you can just use this command here um, in the directory. So you put the diff file in the directory, run the command, and it will patch. Uh, it will it will add all of this by um, automatically. But you can't do it a series of times, like it, or otherwise you'll run into errors because what it's doing with the patches is it's it's attempting to patch the vanilla DWM. So if you try and patch on top of a patched DWM, the uh, these line numbers are not gonna, they're not gonna match up. They're not, things are gonna be moved around and changed. So you're gonna end up with errors and screw everything up. So what I usually do, and maybe there's a better way to do this. Um, I usually patch the first one and then I manually edit the rest. So, um, and this is a fairly long one. So I might patch the alpha one like this using this command. And then on like another one, I'll just, um, I'll literally just open up the, uh, so what file is it? So um, I'll just open this up and um, I'll just go to the line. So right here, for example, 
you know, and then I'll just uh, yeah, literally just copy these in like this, you know, you want to you want to make sure the pluses are out, and that's it. And then I'll just um, I'll go through and do that. Um, so that's how I would uh, sort of how I would patch if I had to patch multiple patches. Um, and then uh, I'm trying to think what else. So you know you can add. Uh, it's just like i3 really. I mean you got your tags, you got your your rules for different windows. Like you can um, tell um, programs uh, which tag to open up in. Like I you know I open up um, my file manager here in in tag four. So you know if I open it up, if I'm in another tag, it's always going to open on this tag here. Um, <clears throat> you know my Firefox browser will open here. Um, Oh, by the way, actually, while I'm here, this is, um, so DWM uses Xlib. Um, so if you want to get into the nitty gritty of like, I'm kind of jumping ahead here, but you know, so that's, that's for basic configs. But if you want to start editing, making advanced customizations and really start editing the code, like, um, um, you know, start getting in here and actually editing what, you know, the, some of the functionality of the window manager, um, the xlib manual is really useful for that because <coughs> that's um you know these are just basically drawn rectangles and drawn text using xlib so once you kind of understand how c does this and again i'm not a professional c programmer but i just read things and and it, it makes sense like it's fairly straightforward to kind of follow you just make it make a lot of trial and error break a lot of things and you learn that way you know and that's kind of what i've been doing and, and i've just been figuring this out as i go along so um, you know, like this one here, this is the, uh, the drawbar function here. And this kind of basically says, um, this is, this is what's telling DWM, uh, this is what's drawing the bar. Basically, this is telling it how to do it and, and in what order. So, you know, here, for example, I've, you know, made a couple of changes to, um, to the way that these things work. Um, I'm not going to go into this right now, but you know, and, and in order to understand these things, like I said, just go to the, just look up Xlib manual and just kind of read it. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you're going to break it a lot. You're going to make errors, but that's kind of how you learn. Um, <clears throat> so yeah. And so I was just saying, this is, um, just like I3 in a sense, it, it just works as a config file. You just add in your, um, your, your key bindings down here. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do a full, full tutorial on this right now, but you know, Kai Hendry's done some pretty good stuff on this, like some basic tutorials. The, um, the, the, probably the most fun is, is doing the status bar. Cause it's, um, it's basically just, um, it's just a basic bash script. So you're just going through, like uh, you just create some little functions like, um, you know, I have, uh, I'll try to give you an example. So for my, uh, my music PD, <coughs> all I'm doing is, um, I'm, uh, I'm checking to see, first of all, if the start, if the music PD daemon is running. Okay. And if it is, then, um, basically what I'm doing here is, yeah, so I've got another if here to see if it's paused. If it's paused, it shows the pause icon, which you can see here. If it's not paused, then it's um, it shows the plus uh, that sorry the play, and then just uses a basic cased uh, cased case to um, to decide what to echo. So if it um, if uh, yeah if if it gets nothing from the status, if it gets nothing, then it what it does is it um, sorry from the uh, the current MPC current, it will. Um, it will echo nothing or if it gets, if it has a result, if it gets some kind of output, then it will, it will echo the artist and the song. Um, and it's that simple. And so once you've created your functions, you just come down here and, and X set root, um, just, and but it, which basically just echoes the name or it, um, it sets the, the root window name, which is, which is what is showing all the text up here. So I have another one for the keyboard. Like if I change my keyboard to, Arabic or Greek or Russian. These are languages that I know because I'm a linguistics guy. Um, or if I change my my volume. Um, the only drawback to this is that it, sl it sleeps one second. So there's a one second delay. 
you know, so if I was to change my volume really quickly, it kind of doesn't catch up fast enough, unfortunately. It doesn't show it in real time. It's kind of, it's got that, that very brief delay, but it's not that big of a deal. Um, you can, you know, some people actually have, uh, have coded uh, a DWM status um, uh, in C, and, and I, don't, I haven't quite learned how to do that yet. Um, but you'd probably be, if you did that, I think you'd probably be able to have more of a, a real time, uh, update on these features. <clears throat> and so that's basically, that's kind of a, a general rundown of, of what I use and, uh, and how I use it. Um, you know, at, at the end of the day, look, um, when all the window managers accomplish the same goal, right? I mean, they just, they arrange the windows in a, 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 as, as tiles on your screen and, they all do the same thing. It's really just about how they do it. And, and DWM isn't necessarily unique in its features, but it's unique in the sense that it's minimal. It's unique in its suckless philosophy. Um, <clears throat> and uh, as much as I'm not a professional C programmer, so I can't say, well, this really affects me, but <clears throat> um, I just admire it. You know, I admire the minimal code base um, and yeah, I mean, I just, I just enjoy learning. I just enjoy, um, and, and, and I found too, and let me, let me encourage you like this too, the, the, the more you hack away at, at something like this and make a lot of mistakes and break a lot of things like my very, very basic C programming experience from high school, like I've, I've kind of, I found that my skills have gone up several notches just by doing this because you're, you're going through that trial and error process of breaking and breaking and breaking until, until you figure it out. Um, you actually learn a lot, you know, and, and most of your operating system, uh, in the case of BSD, Linux, is, is written in C. So you're, you're, um, you're learning not just how to configure a window manager, but you're learning... Um, you're learning really how to how to configure and how to understand the rest of your operating system, how it's working. And um, I've really felt that my skills have gone up a lot um, just playing playing around with things like this. And and sometimes I kind of think, man, I'm wasting a lot of time just messing with this stuff. But um, at the end of the day, you come away and you think, man, I've really learned a lot. Like this has made a big difference to my overall knowledge. So that's it, DWM. <clears throat>